Hello, welcome to the Retrieve AWS VSRX Instance Information Using Python Learning Byte. I'm Gordon Mosley with the Education Services Department at Juniper Networks. Let's get started. After watching this Learning Byte, you will be able to use the Boto3 AWS Python SDK to retrieve AWS VSRX Instance Information. Amazon Web Services provides a Python software development kit called Boto3, and it contains two main Python packages. There's a Boto Core package that is leveraged by the Boto3 Python SDK and also the AWS command line interface. It provides the same capabilities as the AWS CLI or the AWS Web Portal to Python. So instead of using those two tools, I can use Python to manage all of my AWS resources. To use the package, I need to install it. I'm using Python 3 and a Linux administrator workstation. So I use pip3, install boto3, it installs a series of packages. To use the library to manage my AWS resources requires authentication. And you need to generate what's called an AWS programmatic access key for the account that you use to manage your AWS resources. The actual key ID for that programmat programmatic access key and the key value need to be stored in what's called a credentials file. You have to make this. In my home directory, I created a .AWS directory, and in there I created a credentials file, and I placed my access key ID and my secret access key values in that file. The region information is optional, but when you run Python scripts that use the modules in the Boto3 SDK to manage your AWS resources, the, the scripts connect to AWS and they authenticate using these values. And the functions that your scripts can perform are constrained based on the permissions that are assigned to the, the, the account that these credentials represent. So this is how you get control over what type of actions these Python scripts that leverage this Python SDK can perform. A good starting point for anybody who's new to managing AWS resources using Python is the AWS Boto3 documentation. It, it describes in extensive detail all of the object classes that are included in the SDK, all of the methods that those objects support, you know, parameters, options, uh, example code snippets, what type of requests are generated, what type of data is retrieved, and it really helped me get started. I used some of these example scripts included in this documentation for this learning byte. So again, if you're just getting started, this is a great place to begin. There are three different Python scripts that I'm going to demonstrate as part of this learning byte. I, I only had room for a couple of them here on the screen. I just wanted you to see how simple this is to use, how simple these scripts are, how minimal the coding is. In these scripts, and, and we're going to see in a few minutes the amount of information that you can pull back. And so it's very easy to get started on this. And so we're going to have a script that I called Get Elastic IP, and it is going to import the Boto3 library, and it's going to retrieve information about the Elastic IP addresses that have been assigned to my VSRX instance that's running in AWS. Now I'm going to declare a variable, EC2 that is used, that represents my connection to AWS. And then I want to retrieve information about my addresses. So the EC2, the, my, my connection, my EC2 instance has a method. And one of the methods is describe addresses. And that is what's going to retrieve information about the IP addresses assigned to my VSRX instance. And I'd like to pretty print that response to my screen so it's nicely formatted. It's easy for me to read. And then the only thing that's different about the next script, the get AWS VSRX description Python script, is the methods changed. Instead of describe addresses, I want to retrieve information about the instance itself. And so once you are able to create one of these scripts and through trial and error kind of get it to retrieve some information, it's very simple to pick simply a different method and retrieve different information that meets your needs. 
This is the VSRX instance that's currently running in AWS that we'll use for our, our scripting examples. There are four interfaces assigned to that instance. There's the FXP0 management interface. It's assigned to a man, AWS management subnet and an elastic public IP address has been associated with that interface. This is how I would manage that VSRX instance. I also have a Giggy000 interface that's assigned to a public subnet and also receives an elastic public IP address. And this would be the interface and the public IP address that customers or users of whatever resources I'm going to launch on my private subnets and protect with the VSRX. And so there's a Giggy001, 002 assigned to private subnets where you would place, for example, a web server or database servers, any type of resources that you would like customers or users to access. It is uh, inside of a virtual private cloud that is using the 10.0 slash 16 CIDR block. It's running in the US East 1A Amazon Web Services region. And so this is the type of information that I normally see inside of a AWS admin portal. We're gonna be able to retrieve this type of information about that VSRX instance using Python. This is my Linux administrator workstation that we will use for our examples. I, I mentioned the documentation. I wanted to show it to you a little bit. We are going to use the client object class in these examples to represent our connection to AWS resources. And so the documentation will explain the object class and, and list all of the supported methods. And for this particular object class, there are dozens and dozens of methods that you can use to manage your AWS resources. If you want to you know, create resources instead of using the AWS CLI, if you want to create an EC2 instance, create a network interface, create a route table, all of the methods that are available are listed in this documentation. You want to delete objects. What I wanted to show you here, what we the, the methods that we will use in this learning byte all deal with describe. We want to retrieve information, basically get facts about the VSRX instance that we have currently running in AWS. For example, the describe addresses method, right? If I click on that, it will take me to the actual method itself. It will give me an example Python script that display, you know, a use, an example. It will show me uh, any kind of filters, every object, every attribute about that particular, uh, every option about that particular method, I should say, is exposed to me here. And this is how I got started writing some simple Python scripts. So again, I, I just recommend as a good starting point that documentation. Now, this is the VSRX instance that is running in Amazon Web Services. So I can, I can click it. This is what I traditionally use to retrieve this information, but these are the IP ad, the private IP addresses assigned to the four interfaces that we saw earlier. There are also a couple of elastic IP addresses that have been assigned. I can see those. Uh, the instance is running. I can see the instance type. Now, again, I can see this using the AWS CLI. I can see this here in the AWS portal, but I want to see this information using Python. I mentioned the get elastic IP Python script that we saw a little bit earlier. Let me show you the contents of that script. This is the same script we saw in the example slide. So let's run it. Let's see the type of information we can retrieve. So it, re it retrieves the data in a Python dictionary. I, I can see information about here's the Elastic IP address, the you know the idea of the elastic IP address that's been associated with my account. It's been associated with this actual VSRX instance. This is the instance ID. Uh, this is the region that it's running in. This is the elastic network interface that that public IP address has been associated with. Here is the private IP address. This is my private IP address that's assigned to my management interface. This is the actual subnet I assigned the management interface to. And here's the public IP. This is the elastic IP address I could use if I wanted, for example, to secure shell into this instance. And this is the additional elastic IP address that's been assigned to my Giggy000 interface. I placed that interface on this AWS subnet. And this is the IP address, for example, that I would put in DNS 
so my customers can access the resources after passing through the, the VSRX that I use as my security enforcement point. Just information about addressing for my instance. And, and you remember, you, you saw the methods that I scrolled through previously. Th there's a lot of them. Next one I'll, I'll run for you is information about my actual VPC itself. So I change, you know, get addresses to get VPCs. And so I get a little bit different information here. You'll actually see the HTTP response header. I don't, I don't know if that information is valuable to you, but it does it'll at least let me see there's a HTTP you know, 200 response code. So the query was successful. And in my VPC, I actually have two CIDR blocks. This is the default AWS CIDR block that you get when you create a new VPC, but I'm actually using the 10.0 slash 16 CIDR block in my actual VPC. That's where I'm carving out my subnet interface addresses from. If I wanted to get complete detailed information about the actual VSRX instance, let me show you a little simple Python script for this one. Here's my get AWS VSRX description Python script. I, I import the Voto3 library. I'm going to pretty print the output, but the only method that I changed was from describe addresses. The previous example was describe VPCs. Let's do describe instances. Let's run that Python script. Now this one, this one does return quite a bit of output. Oops, some extra, extra characters in there. This one prints quite a bit of output. but it is all of the attributes and properties and values of the VSRX instance that's currently running in AWS that we looked at in the admin portal. Let me scroll up towards the top of the output. It's, it's page after page of output. You can filter. Uh, there's examples in the documentation of creating filters to just pluck the kind of import information that's important to you. So here was our script that we ran. I can, you know, everything about that particular EC2 instance. Now this is a VSRX EC2 instance, but this would work for any uh, instance. Here's the Amazon machine image ID for that particular instance. The instance ID is important because a lot of the methods that are available inside of the Voto3 Python SDK allow you to perform functions based on a particular EC2 instance. So you'll want that information. Here's the instance type, you know, the size of the image. And you, you, if you scroll down, you'll also see the addresses, the public IPs, the private IPs. So all of the data about any instances that you have running in AWS are available to you using the Boto3, AWS Python SDK, and Python. In this learning byte, we use the Boto3, AWS Python SDK to retrieve AWS VSRX instance information. Thank you very much. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.